All right. This is our new electric meter. Stay tuned to the channel because um, before too long I'm going to have an entire video on the public reaction to smart meters and the bullshit involving public opinion of smart meters. Okay, This particular meter right here is an Itron Centron. It is made in the USA. It has built-in auto disconnect capability. They can shut off our power over radio. And what you're seeing here, you have a segment test, and then you have the total kilowatt hours used, which are nine since they installed it. And then you have the current time, which is 22.52. In other words, 10.52 p.m. That's used for various different reasons. Uh, What's SC? SC is, is basically it's in service mode right now, oh, okay. or it's in service initialize mode, which oh, means okay. that it's a new meter. Um, there are, before I get YouTube comments, there are other reasons for SC to appear, but the most common is that it's in service mode because it's been recently installed or there's been a recent power failure. Now, there's three ways for these to communicate. Number one, it has built-in Wi-Fi, standard everyday household Wi-Fi. Number two, it has 3G cellular connectivity. And number three, it has what's called FlexNet. Um, what this meter can do is it, it's actually a daisy chain operation. It finds and connects wirelessly to the nearest electrical meter, which then finds and connects to its nearest meter, which finds and connects to its nearest meter, and so on, until you get to a repeater from the power company, which in our case is Duquesne Light. Duquesne has um, repeaters set up that read the data from these meters and um, actually, you know, point to point to point to point to repeater is how it works. And Duquesne can read the meter wirelessly. Um, it can send a command for the meter to disconnect power to the house. Inside this meter, there are two forks, and they look just like this up here and down here with a solenoid in the middle. If it receives a disconnect command, it can open the solenoid, which will pull both the forks down and disconnect the main lugs in the meter, which there are four of them. One, two, three, four. Um, the meter is always powered, however, by a shunt directly to the uh, weather head, so it will remain active at all times. It also has a feature called last gasp. Um, if we were to open this, remove the meter, it, it has about 10 seconds of um, supercapacitor power capacity. Um, it will send a message to Duquesne advising that it's been disconnected or it's been pulled, um, in which case Duquesne will come around and find out why it's been pulled and if they didn't do it, they're gonna find us. Um, there is no photo cell. There is a rubber cover over what is a button, it appears. Um, and to make a long story short, everyone's complaining about, oh, my personal information is being sent out. No, come on, people. The only information that's stored in that meter is our account number. And what the hell is somebody going to do with our account number? Pay our electric bill? Come on. Give me a break. Anyway, like I said, there's going to be a full video that I've already made. I just need to edit and post it. Um, on smart meter technology and why all these people that are complaining about smart meter technology are basically full of shit. So, um, long and the short of it, this allows the power company to read the meter remotely without sending someone by to check it. Um, it also allows the power company to wirelessly receive information on electric, electrical uh, quality, um, such as power surges, spikes, or other deviations in line voltage. And um, it's actually more accurate than the old magnetic electric meter that was here, which was, I think, a GE, am I correct? ABB. It was an ABB, okay. Um, so the ABB is gone. This is an open way. Um, it's made by ITRON. It's a Centron model. Um, it has NFC, which is near field communication. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi, 3G cellular, and it also comes with an optional in-premise monitoring panel, which you can use to find out your line voltage, how many kilowatt hours you've used, and basically real-time cost of your electrical uh, consumption. Um, 
but yeah, basically what we've got here is a standard um, electric meter uh, that's digital. I've explained the display to you before. This button right here is a reset button. If that is pressed and held while power is applied but no load is applied, then it resets the meter to factory standard. Um, this right here is a connector which can be used for a um, HDA, which is a handheld data appliance that the electric company sends meter readers out with. They can connect to this right here and pull up all kinds of stats from this meter. Um, information that is not transmitted electronically. Right here, I'm not sure exactly what this button is. I assume it's some sort of reset button. It's covered by a hard plastic shell where we can't get to it. Some of these Centron meters are actually equipped with a photocell right here, which literally reads daylight. And if, if, if it's, you know, like right now it's 1050, uh, 10.57, if it's in the middle of the day and the meter reads darkness, then obviously it knows that there's a problem with the weather. Okay, there's a storm, it's cloudy, whatever. The meter can actually indicate to the power company that they need to expect an increased demand because of weather. Um, just all kind of different uh, stuff. It has an internal temperature probe. Um, it's actually two different probes. One of them uh, detects the interior temperature of the meter. The other one detects the ambient temperature of the outdoor air. Um, again, all of that are, are you, all that data are used in algorithms for the power company to be able to manage the smart grid better. And whether or not you like it, the, exist the existing electrical grid is not going to last much longer if demand keeps rising. Um, the key is smart, and the grid is going to have to be smarter and smarter in order for uh, things to survive the way they are without multi-million dollar upgrades. Now, furthermore, the reason why the time is on this meter, which will appear here in a moment, um, this meter keeps up with the current time. We don't have to set it. No one sets it. It, it pulls that over the network. Um, what's going to happen eventually is Duquesne is going to roll out a plan where they use peak, mid-peak, and off-peak. There's three different plans. Um, peak is going to be approximately 14 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, yes, some places in the U.S. it's cheaper, some it's more expensive, but that's what it is in western Pennsylvania in the Pittsburgh area. Like it or lump it, that's what you pay if you want this light to be on, okay? Like it or lump it, that's a fact. Um, Mid-peak is, you know, going to be around 8, 9 o'clock in the evening. People are getting ready to go to bed, they're shutting things down, whatnot. Off-peak is going to be like, say, midnight to 6 a.m. Um, that's going to be when the electrical grid is least loaded down. Um, what's happening with that is we're going to have to pay less for electricity used during that period of time. So the more demand for electricity, the higher price we have to pay at that moment. Last point about this meter here is it incorporates what's called load shedding. If the grid is at a critical stage where um, you know, there are so many people using so much power that it's going to cause a meltdown or transformers are overloading, the grid is overloading, the high, trans the high tension lines are overloading, uh, the 7.2 kV residential grid is overloading, anything. If, if Duquesne finds that it's in an emergency situation and it needs to reduce the amount of power consumption, these meters can do that. They can shut power down, similar to the rolling blackouts in California, for say five minutes at a time um, and, and go down the list five minutes at a time that can shed a lot of uh, load off the grid and allow it to remain operational without everyone losing power for days while they run new wires and they repair high tension lines and they replace transformers. Um, so basically that's along the short of it. Uh, nothing changed but this individual meter and this, this little uh, seal right here. Um, the only thing I can guarantee you for sure that's in the power company's favor is number one they don't have to pay anyone to come out and read this meter anymore. Number two, if we mess with this in any way, shape, or form, they're going to know about it. So that's the only um, that's the only uh, positives to the power company, and our only positives as an electrical consumer is the fact that we will eventually, not yet, but eventually, have uh, the ability to pay less for using power in the off-peak times, which we generally tend to stay up late instead of stay up during the day. So. That works out fine for us. Last but not least, my only personal problem with this is that uh, Duquesne Electric was required to do this by the um, Public Utilities Commission, but yet they are charging us, including us, me and Spats Bear, a monthly fee for that. Okay, We have to pay a monthly payment 
on this meter forever. That's my biggest complaint about it. But anyway, other than that, it is a very smart meter for a smart grid, and it's something that we're going to need unless we want our electric bills to be double so that Duquesne can put up new power lines and everything to every residence in Allegheny County and Beaver County. So it is what it is, like it or lump it, and um, that's the facts of the matter. Thanks.